This is an inverter. An inverter is an electronic device that converts direct current DC to alternating current AC. The current generated by the solar panels is DC. The current stored in the battery bank is also DC. But our loads are AC loads. So how are we going to power this AC load with DC power that is stored in the battery or from the solar panels? So that is where the inverter comes in. So the inverter is connected. If this is our battery bank, positive, negative, we have the positive terminal and the negative terminal. And this is our inverter. It is connected between the battery bank and the load. The load here is uh, AC. So if we have AC loads and we have a battery bank that is DC, we need something that will convert this DC energy that is stored in the battery bank to alternating current so that we'll be able to power our loads just like we are using the generator or power from the grid to power the load. So this is where the inverter comes in. So uh, we have the input side of the inverter and the output side of the inverter. The input side of the inverter have two terminals, the positive and the negative, as you can see here, the red and the black. The red stands for positive, while the black stands for the negative. So uh, this is where you connect your input from the battery bank, positive, negative. Now, when the DC input enters this inverter, what is coming out, the output, is AC. So the AC, depending on your country, uh, where you are located, it could be one, uh, 110, 120 volts, or 220 to 240 volts AC. So that is the basic or the primary function of an inverter, to convert direct current to alternating current. Now we have... Uh, Modified sine wave inverters and pure sine wave inverters. The modified sine wave inverters, their output waveform is not pure as compared to the pure sine wave inverters. The pure sine wave inverters, their output waveform is pure and smooth like the power you have from the grid or from your generator. Now, there are some basic appliances or electronics that will not run smoothly when you connect them to a modified sine wave inverter. And most times, uh, those ad uh, appliances may even get bad because the output waveform of the inverter is not smooth. So those appliances or those loads will not function or work, work well if you connect them to uh, a modified sine wave inverter. Now, in terms of cost, the modified sine wave inverter is far cheaper as compared to the pure sine wave inverter. Now, if you have a 1000 watt modified sine wave inverter and a pure 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter, the pure sine wave inverter, the cost of the pure sine wave inverter will be very high at times times five of uh, the cost of the modified sine wave inverter. Now, when you are connecting your battery bank to the inverter, whether it is pure sine wave or uh, modified sine wave, you need to look at the DC input voltage, that is the nominal system voltage of that inverter. It is the reference voltage that the inverter have, and this voltage must match with the voltage of your battery bank. So let's assume this battery bank is uh, 12 volts, just like this inverter. It is a 12 volt inverter. You can only connect this 12 volt uh, battery bank to a 12 volt inverter. If you have a 12 volt inverter, you cannot connect it to a 24 volt uh, battery bank because uh, they are not compatible. And the 24 volt battery bank is higher than the DC input voltage of the inverter. And it can destroy the internal circuit of the inverter. So you need to look at your DC input voltage. What is the, uh, what is your battery bank voltage? If you have a 24 volt uh, inverter, it means you need to size your battery bank to give you 24 volts. If you have a 48 volt inverter, you need to size your battery bank to give you 24 volts. I mean a 48 volt so that you can connect your 48 volt inverter to the battery bank. Now for the output, 
you also need, need to look at the, uh, the, the output voltage in your country. Are you using 240, uh, 220 volts, 230 volts, 240 volts? Are you using 110 volts? Now, another thing uh, you need to look out for when you are choosing an inverter is to look at your total uh, load consumption, the power consumption of your load, the power rating of your load. For example, if you have uh, a television that is rated 50 watts, you have a fan that is also rated 50 watts, you have uh, maybe a home theater that is also rated 50 uh, watts, and you have, uh, let's say, a small blender. A small blender is small, and it's also rated 50 watts. Now, for you to choose the size of inverter that will be able to power this load, you need to sum all these loads. You need to, you know, uh, look at the total power rating of all your loads. So if you have more than this load, you have to take all of them into consideration. Because you may ask, what can an inverter power? An inverter can power small appliances like your phone charger, your laptop charger, to larger or bigger appliances like your microwave, uh, your oven, your uh, what's it called, your water heater, and other large appliances. The inverter can power them. You only need to choose the size of inverter that will be able to uh, power or run your loads. So you need to know or calculate the total power rating of all the loads you'll be connecting to the inverter. So for this one, the total power rating of the loads is 200 watts. If you sum all of them, you have 200 watts. Now, if you are choosing an inverter, it is not good for you to choose an inverter that is rated 200 watts to connect this 200 watts load to the inverter. You need to take into consideration uh, the efficiency of the inverter. You need to take into consideration losses. You need to also take into consideration what we call the, direct, um, the safety factor. So if we use a, a safety factor of 0 0.8, we will divide this 200 by 0 0.8. So we'll have 200 divide 0 0.8. This is what? This will give us 200 and 50 watts. So this will be the size of inverter we will use to power this 200 watt load. So if you have your total uh, wattage, after doing your calculation, that's why you need to always carry out a load analysis or a load audit. If your total load is 1000 watts, you divide it by 0 0.8. What you have will be the size of inverter that you're going to choose in order to power your load. So this are the things you need to take into consideration when you are choosing an inverter. This one is a modified sine wave inverter. You can see how small it is. But if it is pure sine wave, this is 1000 watts. You can see it here. It is 1000 watts inverter. Modified sine wave. And it is 12 volt. But if you bring a, um, a pure sine wave inverter that is rated 1000 watts, the size the inverter will be far bigger than this one. I will not be able to hold it like this. It will be bigger because it is more efficient and also more expensive as compared to this one. And it will give you a pure uh, uh, output waveform that you can use to power uh, your appliances. Another thing also you need to take into consideration is search. Search or starting power. Now, if you have... Uh, things like uh, water pump, you have your water pump, you need to uh, take into consideration the surge power of this water pump, the starting power of this water pump. Now, after knowing the starting power of the water pump, then you now check the specification of the inverter. If the surge rating of that inverter will be able to withstand the starting or surge power of the water pump. If the surge power rating of that inverter cannot withstand the starting power of this water pump, if you connect this water pump to the inverter, the inverter will shut down. Then another thing also, you need to look at the size of the cables that you connect between the inverter and the battery bank. The size of cables should be able to, you know, carry the amount of current that will be flowing through those cables. If the cables are not large enough to carry the current, 
when you switch on that inverter and you connect your loads to that inverter, the inverter can also shut down even when your battery bank, the state of charge of your battery bank is 100%. Even when that battery bank is fully charged, but because the size of cables you are using, they are not large enough to you know, accommodate or carry the current that is flowing through them from the battery bank to the inverter, the inverter will shut down. And at times the cables will become hot and the inverter will be sensing high temperature and it will shut down. So it is always good for you to properly size your solar components so that the solar system, the solar power system will function efficiently. Now, if you need uh, PDFs on step-by-step -step, uh, guide on how to size a, a solar power system, you can check the link on my description, on the uh, description of this video to, you know, download the material and use for your consumption. Thank you for watching. See you in my next video.